Hello and welcome to all. Today we're going to look at the intriguing story of Kwaku Adaboli, a character whose impact on the financial world has been as profound as it has been unexpected. His story is a true case study, illustrating both the dizzying heights and troubling abysses of the banking sector. Beginning his career with promise and ambition at UBS, one of the world's largest banks, Adaboli quickly rose through the ranks. However, in 2011, his trajectory took a dramatic turn when he was implicated in a massive fraud scandal. But what led this talented trader to cross the line? How could his actions go undetected for so long at such a prestigious institution? Join us for an in-depth exploration of the rise and fall of Kwaku Adaboli, a tale that reveals the hidden facets of high-level trading and the human entanglements that weave themselves behind the decisions that shape our global economy. And if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss our upcoming video. Kwaku Adaboli, born in 1980 in Ghana, had a unique childhood, punctuated by moves due to his father's career as a United Nations official. From his native Ghana, he traveled as far as Israel and Syria, forging an intimate bond with a multitude of cultures from an early age. This diversity of experience not only enriched his perspective on the world, but also underlined the importance of education, a principle strongly rooted in his family. So it was only natural that he should go on to study at Ackworth School in the UK, a prestigious setting where he cultivated his academic skills and developed a keen interest in the disciplines that would shape his future career. This drive for excellence continued at the University of Nottingham. There, Adaboli first began his studies in chemical engineering in 2000, before making a significant transition to e-commerce and digital business studies. This evolution in his academic career plunged him into a fascinating world at the crossroads of technology and commerce, opening up a whole new horizon of possibilities. But his involvement in university life also extended beyond his studies, as he was elected communications officer of the Students' Union. This role highlighted his leadership qualities and communication skills, complementing his academic training. At the same time, his studies and academic involvement have awakened his curiosity for the financial markets, a field rich in intellectual challenges and opportunities. However, this budding passion for finance was quickly confronted with the reality of the professional world during a summer internship in the UBS Operations Department, a world-renowned investment and financial services bank based in London. This first hands-on immersion in the financial sector, far from being a mere work experience, was a key point in Adaboli's career. Indeed, the internship at UBS gave him a clearer vision of what he wanted to achieve in the future, reinforcing his aspiration to play a significant role in this field. Capitalizing on this enriching initial experience, Adabolan wasted no time in taking his career to the next level. Following his successful internship, he joined UBS as a full-time employee. Since then, his career path has taken off at an impressive pace. He first took on the role of trading analyst in the back office, spending two years honing his skills and familiarizing himself in depth with the intricacies of trading. Naturally, his ability to understand and maneuver in the complex world of finance did not go unnoticed. Thanks to his talent and determination, it didn't take long for him to progress and be entrusted with greater responsibilities, leading to his promotion to the Delta One desk a unit specializing in sophisticated financial products such as swaps, derivatives and exchange-traded funds ETFs. However, he obviously didn't stop there. In 2008, Adaboli made a significant career leap by becoming a director on the ETF desk. This role highlighted not only his technical skills, but also his ability to manage strategic, high-level trading operations. And that's not all. Two years later, in 2010, he took the next step by becoming a director, with an annual salary reaching almost £200,000. This promotion was not just recognition of his expertise and contribution to the bank, but also a reflection of his personal ambition and commitment to excel in the competitive world of finance. Behind this meteoric rise, however, were the trading practices that would soon thrust Adaboli into the spotlight for less than stellar reasons. From 2008 onwards, Adabolia began to deviate from the bank's standard policies and procedures, engaging in unauthorized trading. These operations, carried out without the bank's consent or knowledge, were speculative in nature, often based on bold bets on the direction of the markets. And to conceal his unauthorized trading activities, Kwaku Adaboli employed some rather sophisticated deceptive accounting techniques. In particular, he used an unofficial account, nicknamed the Umbrella Account, to conceal the large losses resulting from his speculative bets. 
This fictitious account enabled him to defer recognition of the losses by temporarily hiding them. But these manipulations were not limited to the creation of this account. Adeboli also altered the bank's transaction records and internal reports. Thus, by not declaring losses and transferring them to the umbrella account, he created a misleading picture of the financial performance of his trading activities. These maneuvers were not legitimate risk management strategies, but rather calculated attempts to thwart internal controls and distort financial reality. This strategy, although initially effective in pursuing its high-risk trading activities, could not be maintained indefinitely. Indeed, the volatile and risky nature of its trading eventually led to the accumulation of losses so significant that they could no longer be concealed. It was this uncontrollable accumulation that led to the inevitable revelation of the scandal in September 2011, forcing UBS to publicly acknowledge a massive $2 billion loss, directly linked to Adeboli's actions. This sum represented even the largest unauthorized trading losses in British history. This, unsurprisingly, had a severe impact on the bank, leading to a drastic fall in its stock market value and undermining investor confidence. However, the repercussions of this scandal were not limited to UBS. Far from it. The financial markets as a whole have been shaken, with significant consequences for risk perception and confidence in the banking system. Questions have even been raised about the effectiveness of the control and monitoring mechanisms in place, not only at UBS but also at other financial institutions. In the face of this crisis, attention quickly turned to the legal implications for Kwaku Adeboli. With the revelation of the financial scandal and massive losses, Adeboli's fate took a decisive turn. Arrested on September 15, 2011, he found himself at the center of a major legal case. The charges against him were serious, he faced charges of fraud by abuse of position and false accounting. These charges, laid out in the courtrooms, reflected the complexity and gravity of the unauthorized transactions and concealments in which Adeboli had engaged. As the trial unfolded, with its successive hearings and testimonies, a fuller and more detailed picture of Adeboli's actions within the bank gradually emerged. Shedding light not only on his maneuvers, but also on the flaws in UBS's control systems that had enabled these abuses to take place. Against this backdrop, the gravity of the situation was further accentuated by Adeboli's pre-trial detention, which lasted until June 8, 2012. Even his release on bail, with strict conditions such as electronic monitoring and a curfew, only marked a brief pause in the judicial hurricane raging around him. So when the verdict was delivered on November 20, 2012, the trial reached its climax. The reason? Well, on that day, the jury found Adeboli guilty of fraud. In fact, he was even sentenced to seven years in prison, a sentence that underlined the extent of the consequences of his actions at UBS. Nevertheless, Adeboli's conviction did not mark the end of his journey. His early release in 2015, after serving half his sentence, paved the way for a new chapter in his life. Instead of retreating into the shadows, he chose instead to become an active player in the financial sector, this time in a completely different light. Indeed, Adeboli has transformed himself into an ardent advocate of banking reform. He is actively involved in promoting better governance and greater respect for standards in the financial sector. Embracing the role of whistleblower, he has dedicated himself to educating and raising awareness among a wide range of audiences, from university students to corporate executives and managers, on the importance of transparency and ethics in the world of finance. Continuing in this vein, Adeboli has shared his personal experiences and lessons learned from past mistakes, shedding light on the dangers of unregulated banking practices. Through lectures, seminars and workshops, he emphasized the need to establish a culture of rigorous compliance and individual responsibility in the financial sector. In doing so, his aim was clear. To help prevent future financial crises similar to the one he had caused, by calling for structural reforms and raising awareness of the associated risks. However, this phase of his life as an advocate of financial reform was interrupted by an unexpected development. In October 2018, Adeboli faced deportation from the UK, the country where he had spent the majority of his adult life. This decision, based on British laws governing foreigners sentenced to long terms, therefore forced him to return to Ghana. Despite protests and appeals on his behalf, he was sent back to a country with which he had had no significant tie since childhood. This forced return marked a difficult turning point and a radical change in his personal and professional life. In conclusion, 
Kwaku Adeboli's saga paints a nuanced picture of modern finance, where individual ambitions can have global consequences. His story, evolving from a spectacular rise at UBS to a dramatic fall and eventual expulsion from the UK, serves as a poignant reminder that the actions of one person can influence an entire sector. Beyond the numbers and legal proceedings, it reveals the complexity of human interactions within global financial structures and the unexpected scope of decisions taken in the upper echelons of finance.